This is the Chrissy Swan Show. Getting you wherever you need to go this Friday afternoon. Hello, Hollywood Jack. Good afternoon. We have got, if you are a true crime aficionado, I am. I'm so like diet in the wool true crime that I've loved it ever since you had to lie about it. Now it's all very open and everybody's into it. But I've loved it for so long that I used to have to blame my mother in bookstores to try and find books. I'm like, oh, my mum's just a psycho. psycho. Uh, you know, she reads all this <laughs> terrible stuff. Where is the department? I had to lie. Because people would judge you otherwise. Yes, I don't judge you anymore. Tune in later on uh, this hour. Natalie Barr is going to be talk to us, uh, talking to us about Kathleen Folbig, who was once the most hated woman in Australia and was wrongly convicted of killing her four children. Sounds heavy, but we're going to try and, you know, lighten it up. It's a very interesting story. And we will be sending someone <gasps> to see Kylie Minogue live in Las Vegas. Today's the day. Now, call me and say day, but not just with anything. I want to know, have you Hulk smashed today? Do you know the term Hulk smash, Jack? I don't. So me and my friend say, are you Hulk smashing? Which means, are you achieving more than you thought was going to happen today? Right. So this morning, I have Hulk smashed. I've Hulk smashed today out of the park. I have picked up some ta- two towels that I bought for myself from the post office. I took two subscriptions off my automatic direct debit. <gasps> I need to do that this weekend. I was paying $80 for newspapers that I do not open. That's ridiculous. A month. Where were the papers? Just chilling on the front lawn? No, I'd just bring them in and put them straight in the recycling. <laughs> so stupid, but I've sorted that out. I've dropped some resort wear into my sister who's going on a holiday to Fiji in a few days. Beautiful. So I've, I've raided my uh, barley wardrobe bathers, etc. And... I have rejigged my gas and electricity plan, saving 24%. Hulk smash! Have you Hulk <laughs> smashed today? Chrissy's Say G'day. I have Hulk smashed today out of the park. Been to the post office, um, got my printer to work. A huge for you. Yes. How did you um, manage that? Did you Google instructions or...? Yes. Okay. That's good. No, that's good. I'm not judging. But some days you just can't do it, and then other days you... Absolutely. (laughs) Hulk! Smash! I also put in an early vote. Very organised. Can you believe how much I've Hulk smashed today? What happened to Chaotic Chrissy, and where has she gone? Ridiculous. Shelley, have you Hulk smashed today? I absolutely have. Tell us what you've done, Shell. I've recently sold my house and so everything has to go and I have a very large gilded mirror and it, and the man couldn't pick it up until next week but that just couldn't happen so I decided to deliver it to him. What? And you now, carried a large gilt mirror and delivered it to somebody you met on I've, Facebook Marketplace? Correct. I, I had the neighbour put it in the car and over to Mooney Ponds I drove and... Shelley, the great Hulk smash of that whole exchange is that you're still alive to tell the story. And we've got a Priceline <laughs> Pharmacy voucher for you. Well done. Isabel, have you Hulk smashed today? Yes, I have. I did a session in Reformer Pilates this morning. Oh. And then I have been studying for my exam, uni exams next week. You know, and I achieved way more study than I thought I would. Isabel, even just going to the Reformer, what time was the Reformer Pilates class? 6 a.m. Oh, my God. That is enough. That is a whole day. Smash. <laughs> Price on Pharmacy Voucher for you, Genevieve. Genevieve. Oh, bonjour, Chrissy. Bonjour, How Genevieve. Ça va, ça va bien? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. A little bit of Franglish there. What do they call it? Franglish? Yeah, my limit of my French. Yeah. Just the French name does it all, doesn't Genevieve. it? Genevieve. How have you oh, Hulk you. smashed today? Well, I'm ploughing through a Halloween cape. It's a dress-up costume, but it's going to be reversible so that it can be used off-season as well. Genevieve, this is amazing. You know, I am... You are are Hulk smashing! My... uh, All I do for trick-or-treating costumes is I I go to eBay and I go to, like, costumesforyou.com.au. That's the way you've got to do it. I mean, I respect the hustle, Genevieve, but that's a big task. Genevieve, I'm going to send you a Priceline Pharmacy voucher and they have a great... um, Every Halloween, they have great little sort of uh, paper buckets of amazing 
ghoul makeup Ooh. and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. That You'll, sounds like fun. You must do that. Good on you, Genevieve. Let's Kel. finish with Kelly. Kelly, how have your Hulk smashed this morning? Well, I did a gym class at 8.30 mm. and then I had another gym class at 10.30 at the same place. But in between, I went to Priceline and then I went to Vote. And then, sadly, um, I had an online funeral to watch at 12.30. And I'm selling my house too, so I'm going through all my memorabilia. Oh, wow. And kind of got distracted with my... I found my reports from kindy to year six, so I was kind of multitasking there. And now I'm on my way to get a manicure and a pedicure. Kelly, you have Hulk smashed... You have Hulk smashed Friday the 13th of October right out of the ballpark. I'm going to send you... Two Priceline Pharmacy vouchers for that effort. Huge. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Congratulations, Kel. The Chrissy Swan Show. No one, especially women of a certain age, should ever feel invisible, disconnected or unimportant. Priceline Pharmacy celebrates you and all your uniqueness at every age because at Priceline, it's always a festival of you. Head in store online at Priceline.com.au. The Chrissy Swan Show. And if you're a true crime aficionado like I am, you're going to be wanting to tune in to Channel 7 News Spotlight, 7pm Sunday, uh, and see Nat Barr have an in-depth conversation with Kathleen Folbig. Welcome to the show, Natalie. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. Thank you. Now, can you give us in a nutshell for those listeners that aren't fully across the case as I am, um, uh, who Kathleen Folbig is and why this is such a big exclusive? Well, she was the most hated woman in this country for many years. She was Australia's worst serial killer. She was convicted of killing Caleb and Patrick and Sarah and Laura, her four children, who aged uh, died at the age of 19 days through to 18 months over a 10-year period between 1989 and 1999. She was convicted of smothering her four little babies mm. There was no evidence of that smothering, hmm. but basically she went to court and the court heard babies don't just die in families, especially four of them hmm. in a row. She must be guilty. She was largely convicted on what was contained in the diaries that hmm. she had written as a child. They were quite damning. They sounded like she had killed those children. So basically on the basis of that, she was convicted. She was thrown into jail for 20 years. 20 years. Mm-hmm. As long as I've been on Sunrise, 2003, she spent in jail. And then slowly over the years, lawyers started, they started questioning some of the evidence mm. and some of the things that weren't questioned in the trial. Then the science came on board, a group of scientists, a group of 90 prominent scientists from around the world ended up calling for her pardon and she was pardoned and released only a couple of months ago. She is out. She hasn't been exonerated, but the science freed her. What an unbelievable story. Now, you've spent, I'm assuming, a lot of time with her, a fair amount of time with her. Mm. My question to you is... I would be furious if I had not hurt my children, particularly my children, and I had done 20 years in jail. How does she appear so calm and forgiving? I thought the same thing. When I first walked in at her friend Tracy's farm near Coffs Harbour. Yeah, now Tracy's been really instrumental in this, the, the freeing of Kathleen, hasn't she? Mm. Mm. So they were childhood friends and she basically called her from jail in six-minute conversations because that's all a mm. jail conversation can go for. They have yeah. to talk really fast. And I walked in and I thought, what am I going to encounter? I'll encounter a bitter, angry person because, hey, wouldn't we all be bitter and furious and like, I want to, I don't know. Yes. How, how do I react? She was none of those things. Spent the weekend together. We didn't film anything hmm. for the whole weekend. Great. We just chatted, cups of tea, talked to the horses. It's a beautiful property. Walked around the horses and got to know each other. Because I and imagine that trust is a, is the biggest element of this interview. Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether she was going to say, look, I don't like you, you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, no, because allegedly a, a large sum had hit the account by that stage. <laughs> That's above my pay grade, whatever the hell happens. <laughs> now, how, did, uh, how did she find prison? I imagine you go into this on Sunday night, but, like, how was she treated in prison? Mm. There were, she describes this, you're right, some of the awful things in prison, mm. how isolating it was, the threats the gruesome nature of it, and for a woman who just had a really, really ordinary Aussie life until then, except for these horrible things that had happened to her. She goes into detail. Mm. Something else I find really interesting as well is, like you mentioned at the start of the interview, these damning diary entries and sort of what she was originally put away for. And she does reference her father and how she's her father's daughter because he killed her mother. Does she go into that at all? Mm. I ask her. Okay. Yeah, I ask her about that. And we ask her about the diary entries because they helped convict her. Yeah. Yeah, well, it does seem odd to be the daughter of a murderer and then end up with four dead children and a line that says, I'm my father's daughter. I can understand how, with my limited yeah. understanding of the, of the law system, how that could be a problem. And that was brought up in the trial. mm as well as, well, four babies don't just die in one family. But then when you hear the science mm. and you hear how they found a genetic mutation that's yeah. never been found before, they found it in Kathleen and this amazing story of how they got into the prison, the scientists, and got Kathleen's DNA. Wow. And then they got, you know how they got the DNA? How do you get the DNA of children who've passed away all those years ago? Yeah, how? You, you know how they got it? How? If you've had a child, you know about the heel prick test. Yes. The heel prick test, they take a little bit of blood from the heel of your kid and they drop it onto a card. That blood was how they got the DNA wow. from her last two children, Sarah and Laura, and that DNA basically wow. unbelievable. God freed her. It is a super intriguing case. I, for one, will be locked and Absolutely. loaded on 7 News Spotlight, 7pm Sunday night on Channel 7. Thank you so much for joining us, Nash. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate you having me on. The Chrissy Swan Show. Who am I? A queen in the kitchen? Could be. Now find your queen vanilla in the baking aisle to discover how a little queen does wonders in your bakes. What's my name? Who is it? Chrissy Swans. What cake am I? I feel like queen baking are going to have to have some sort of liquidation sale soon because they have given away so much cash on this show this year in this competition. Eve, today is a special day because on Fridays we stump up $1,000. <laughs> I know. And we're not asking you for the name of a celebrity. We're asking you for the name of a type of cake. We've had – I'm salivating <laughs> because I just remembered that we had caramel slice and vanilla slice mm. and red velvet cake, three of the greats. Are you a baker, yeah. Eve? Not so much a baker. I'm more a chocolate ripple kind of gal, oh, but God. I – I, I'm much better with cakes than celebrities, so this is this is for me. Fantastic. <laughs> Good. Well, this is how it's going to work. We've got five clues here. The first one is worth $1,000. If you solve it in the first one, that's a grand to you. If oh you uh, don't get that one right, we go straight to clue two, and it's down to 400 300 200 100 respectively. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Clue number one for $1,000, Eve. The family recipe for me is often passed down through the generations. Is it a carrot cake? It is not a carrot cake, which is my favourite, by the way. Clue number two for $400 cash. I can be dark or light in colour. Chocolate cake. No. Clue number three for $300. I can be boiled or baked. Oh, the uh, Christmas pudding? Mm. Oh, no. You were nearly going to... Swanee was nearly going to lie there and just give it to you. I could see it in her, in her eyes. I am... Oh, clue Christmas. number four for 200 bucks. I am popular at Christmas at Christmas and weddings. Oh, it's a fruit cake. It is a fruit cake, Evie. 
It's a $200 fruit cake for you, my love. Thank you. Of course, like with anything, once you know the answer, you're like, of course it's I know. a fruit cake. Of course. Yeah. I'm an idiot, damn it. Mm. <laughs> Chrissy's clickbait. I'm really nervous for Taylor Swift. Why? <laughs> because... You know what happens when someone gets, like, next level everyone talking about her? People start to change their mind. As in the fans or she'll change? No, the fans turn. I'm nervous for Tay-Tay because she is a genius. She's magical. She's my queen. But just with the new boyfriend and all of this exposure and I've just seen she's popped into a movie prep. She's got a, now a blockbuster movie in cinemas. I mean, is there nothing this woman can't do? She's amazing. In case she didn't need any more money, now she's making it at the movies. The money I don't care about. Money's money, but I'm scared that people's opinion of her is going to change and she's pure and an angel and a genius. And I just worry. I just worry that there's too many column centimetres dedicated to her. I just don't think that's changing anytime soon. I'm I know. Afraid. It seems to be getting more. She's uh, she's popped into her movie premiere, which uh, was at the Grove in Los Angeles last night. That's a shopping centre that I've been to. I've been there too. It's so nice. Yeah, it's cool. You feel like you're on a movie set when you're at the Grove. Completely. It's bizarre. Completely. And Beyonce was at the premiere too. Beyonce was there. Lots of superstars were there. Adam Sandler. Remember him? <laughs> <laughs> remember Click, the worst film of all time? The wor- Wasn't that Sophie Monk in there too? Oh, yeah, I Click? think she did appear in that. Adam Sandler was there. Beyonce was there, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, Mariska Hargitay from Law & Order SVU. Yeah. And uh, Flavor Flav. <laughs> oh, hello. That's random. He copped an invite. He sure did. That's a very motley crew yeah. turning up for Taylor Swift. But she also had uh, lots of super fans there and they were hand-picked uh, to attend this. It's already made, this movie. So the movie is just her era's tour in the cinemas, which is great news for Australians because it is in cinemas now. Yeah. And most of us are not going to be able to go and see the show because there's not enough tickets. And I was looking at the session times before we came on air and there are a lot. So I feel like people will be able to get in to see it. Oh, it's fully stacked. And I'm just, I'm just, I've am just, just lost the amount of money it's made. But, okay, it's made $26 million on its opening night, they're expecting it to gross $115 million by the Far out. close of the weekend. Insane. It is crazy. It is crazy the amount of people that want a little piece of Taylor. I love Troy Sivan. I love that song that we're playing at the moment, Rush. And he is just style, style, style. He has said that uh, whenever he releases a song that he's written about an ex-lover... He plays it to that person first, just That's so that nice. they. That is so kind. I feel like everyone should do that. Like all artists should do that. It's just common courtesy. And also for many, many reasons, because obviously Troy Savan is one guy, but he's obviously got a, a lot, not a lot of exes, but more than one. Mm. By playing it to that person, it takes away the guessing game of that person hearing the song. Totally. And going, is that about me? And then imagine all your mates messaging you being like, Oi, did you hear Troy's song? It's totally about it's you. It's totally about you. And then you can say, yes, it is. Or I don't want to talk yeah. about it. You know? Or yes, it is. No, it's not. I still don't want to talk about it. His new album, Something to Give Each Other, dropped today. And my favourite song on it is the second single. It's called Got Me Started. And do you remember this song by the Bag Raiders? No. You don't know your song? No. This is probably my top five. Surely. I do not know this song. Really? That surprises me. Well, he sampled it in this song, and it's the uh, people have tried to sample that little cool bit for years, and they've always said no, but the Bag Raiders have said yes to Troy to sample it. Because he's style, because style, he's style. Troy Savant. And when, listen- you said, when you said that t- the song title, I thought it might have been a cover of the great Simply Red. Oh, I know this bit. Yeah. Is that the sample? This is the sample. Oh, okay, I know that bit. I love that. It's so sick. And anyway, this is I was, a great song, Troy Savard. I was blaring it in my car this morning, Swanee, as I was uh, Hulk smashing and voted early. Mm. And this guy comes up and knocks on my window. And I was like, oh my God, am I on my phone? Like, what have I done? <gasps> yes, what have I done? Anyway, I put, he like, he's pointing to, my, to his ears and for me to put my window down. So I put my window down and he goes, what are you listening to? And I said, oh, I'm new Troy Savant. It's called Got Me Started. 
And he goes, this is his brother. And then his brother <gasps> Steele came over and oh, was dancing with me. That's a great Dancing story. to Troy's song. I know. Attractive family, I've got to say. Yeah, you're going to write a song about him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Chrissy Swan Show. We've got an hour to go and it is jam-packed. Before we're out of here, we are going to be sending another person to go and see our princess, our pop princess, Kylie Minogue in Las Vegas. It makes me sweaty talking about it, Swanee, because it's such a big deal. This is really the first time in your time in radio that you've been here at the moment of giving amazing prizes away. And is it or is it not the best part of the job? It sure is. And to be fair, this year we've had a lot of great prizes, but this definitely takes the cake for me. It's been so wonderful. I just want to give you this uh, little nugget ahead of the weekend because I think a lot of people are going to be watching the Beckham documentary on Netflix and I recommend it wholeheartedly. I need to finish it. Patty Swan's watched it. Oh, iconic. Pat- good Patty Swan good watched job, it. Patty. She said, I'm currently watching Beckham. He got so much and he is still wonderful and ditto posh. <laughs> so there you go. And another quote of the day. This is, a, is an oldie but a goodie because Victoria Beckham is much maligned for having a resting bitch face. I mean, she may have even sort of coined that phrase. She never smiles in photos, nothing. Which is unfair, but anyway. It's absolutely unfair. It's called, um, you know. Was being stylish. Yeah, I was about to say it's fashion. She was asked uh, on a red carpet, why, why do you never smile in photographs? And she said, I'm smiling on the inside, but I feel I have a responsibility to the fashion community. <laughs> yes, Posh! She is the best. You will fall in love with them. Adam Winter would have loved that. Hey, next, Chrissy's Quizzy. The Chrissy Swan Show. Chrissy's Quizzy. I've got a bum bag in my hands and I'm not afraid to give it to you, Anna. Hello, how are you? I'm so good. Your line is terrible, so we're, we're going to push on. But just make okay. sure that when the time comes, you say your name loud and clear like you, Linny. Lynn. Hi. Hi, Linny. Do you want this bum bag so bad you can almost taste it? I know. It's so exciting. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> You're pretending, but he's so sweet. All right, your name are your buzzers. Anna, you get in there. Linny, you get in there. It's the best of five, meaning the first person to get three ounces correct wins the game and will walk away with the money cut by Chrissy Swan Show bum bag. We actually dipped into the supplies to give one to the great actress, Jane Hall. Mm. And I think I watched her from the window here, throw it in the bin outside <laughs> before she got to her car. Question number one. Good on you, Jane. Jada Pinkett Smith made a massive revelation about her marriage yesterday. What was it? Oh, my God, you've missed it. It's so interesting. I'm g- going to guess that neither of you have got no idea. She revealed that her and her, well, who we thought was her husband, have actually been separated for seven years. Isn't that interesting? Gosh, people are are fascinating. Question number two, that's zip for either of you. What is the common name for dried plums? Anna's just just dropped out, so that's awesome. Prunes, prunes, Lynn. Prunes, prunes. yes, Lynn. Done. We're just going to play with you, Lynn. You seem to have an advantage given that there's no one on Hannah's line. I'm going to make you get to the three points, though. Question number three. Fifteen years ago, Beyonce released this song. Oh, it's Yes, Lynn. Put a ring on it. What's it called, though? Oh, is that not what it's called? Um, All the... Um, all, sorry, all the people. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. I really want to hear <laughs> no, let's this. Do this. Yeah. <laughs> let's double down. Lynn, you have all the time in the world. What is that song called? All the people in the world? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what, what else could it be called? Um, I just I sing it all the time. I've got it on my playlist. I just can't think of the name of it. Put a ring on it is in the brackets after the two worded title. Oh, God, it's single ladies, Lynn, for the love of God. (laughs) Question number four. (laughs) Another pop star has this week announced a Las Vegas residency. Who am I talking about? Las Vegas residency? Oh, I've got no idea. Obviously. I quite (laughs) literally gave it away as we went into this segment. Did you hear what we were saying? 
Oh, my line was really scratchy once I got on the line, so when I had to turn my radio off. <laughs> <laughs> good excuse, excuse, Lenny. Lynn, Very good. you're yeah. still the only one in the running. And you've won the bum bag because yeah. I have lost the will to live. <laughs> and we've had a really great year this year, Swanee, but if our show ended after that, four minutes of radio, I would understand. Yeah, I would too. In fact, oh, hello, come in. <laughs> come no. in. Why? Here's my swipe pass. Why are you holding a red card? <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Were you introduced to your current partner by your ex? Oh, I love this. Or is your current partner friends with your ex? Is that how you got to know each other? Because Bradley Cooper um, debuted a new relationship this week with Gigi Hadid, who's a model. And you do go, you're, I'm always fascinated in the stories around how people meet because it seems so random, doesn't it? Yeah. To I mean, you meet people all the time, but then if you, you meet somebody and then that becomes somebody very special to you, I just think that I, I could listen to those stories all the time. I could too. And when it comes to celebrities as big as Gigi and Bradley Cooper, I just yeah. always imagine it just has to be sliding into each other's DMs. I always imagine that. And and back before social media, it was agents hooking up. Yes. You know, Bradley's manager would call yep. Gigi's manager and, and sort it out. It would out. be arranged. Mm. Yeah, an, an arranged marriage, if you will. But that is not what happened here with these two. Uh, so Bradley used to be married to Irina Shake. I, Irina Shake. Yes. And they've got a child together, but things didn't work out. She is like, I know we're not talking about looks, but like she is exquisite. When you look at Irina Shake, it's like, how, how are you real? She's a model, isn't she? She is, yeah, yeah. right. Well, you get that, don't you? And Gigi Hadid is also very beautiful and a model. Both of them are models. They're friends. They've been mm. friends for years. So I, and, and that's how... Bradley Cooper knows Gigi Hadid because she's a friend of Arena's and they got in, they got introduced that way. I always wonder in those situations, Jack. Yeah. Just say Bradley and Irina when they were together having a barbecue, the kids are coming over. Did Gigi join in? Yes. <laughs> and the and the same. whole time was Bradley looking at her going, I'm with the wrong woman. Right. Or was there like chemistry there. I just think it's so fascinating. I think there totally would have been, and I think that's what would make it so exciting now. Like for that k- little spark to have been there yeah. and for it to now eventuate, it would be so exciting now. So it makes me wonder, will it then just fizzle? Because those little sparks of electricity, once you get to enjoy them and have them come to fruition, I feel like it's going to fade out. I feel like I've spoken to people in this situation before and they've said, no, I never... Because it happens more than you would imagine, mm. you know, particularly with a friend of your wife or husband that you've been with. They know you. They've been to your house. They've seen you in the morning. You've, all of that stuff, it's so comfortable. You know, yeah. it follows the rule of be friends before you, but you know, before your partners. But people always say, oh, no, I never looked at her that way in that situation Bull until, you, do you reckon? Yeah. Until my relationship was over. No. Nah. You reckon that's a lie? I reckon that's a lie. Well, we want to hear from you. 13, 24, 10, were you introduced to your current partner via your ex-partner? And when did it happen? And what was it like? And when did you finally confess that you had feelings? And, like, when you catch up now, do you all ever just throw the keys in the bowl and head to the master? <laughs> like... Surely if Irina's coming over, that's a fun And also, how is Irina taking it now? Right? Yeah. The Chrissy Swan Show. We're talking about uh, hot new couple alert, Bradley Cooper and Gigi Hadid, who were introduced by his ex-wife. They were married, weren't they? They had a baby. They have a kid. I'm not sure. Surely you can't have a child if you're right? not married. Of course they were married. But it's his ex, it's the mother of his child, and um her and Gigi used to work together and I am guessing that Gigi was around there all the time. Yeah. And Bradley was getting to know her. And like I wonder if when Bradley was at the shows that Irina and Gigi were both in, whether he was like just looking at Gigi. No, he's not a dog. Mm. Who knows? <laughs> Jury's out. Who knows? <laughs> Natiko, has this happened to you? Yes, it has, actually. All right. So your current boyfriend yes. is a friend of your ex-husband's. Uh, best Was best friend. <gasps> yeah. Run us through what happened. <laughs> well, actually, we're all actually friends. We're all best friends. Hang out. I met my current boyfriend on a different 
separate time. Yeah. And um, my ex had met him on a different time and then we all hung out together. He How actually, many years were you hanging out together as a as a trio? Um, basically the entire relationship, which I was with him for oh, about 14, 15 years. Wow. And in that 14 years, did you ever look at your... You know your your husband then's mate and think, oh, he's hot. I'd like to, you know. Oh, I heard you talking about this before. Oh god. Okay. Uh, you, yeah. You did. You did. Yeah. And did yeah. he? Do you think he was just biding his time until mm. the lion was sleeping? If you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I think so. And then once you got together, so so you obviously your marriage dissolved. You got with your oh. ex husband's best mate. How did your ex take it? He did not take it very well at all. Um, at that point, I don't know, we weren't really together, so I was just kind of ignoring. Oh, we've lost you, Natiko, but what a juicy story. I tell you what, Friday the 13th is screwing with our phone lines today. It is. It is. Priceline pharmacy voucher for you, Natiko. God, I hope that they are up and running when we make our amazing Kylie calls. Right. Soon. We've got to give away that trip to Las Vegas. Christina, tell us your story. I met my husband uh, through my ex-boyfriend and they were both in the army together Um, and so I used to hang out at the barracks quite a lot and so I met my um, husband through him and then when I got dumped by that boyfriend, I dumped the man I'm married to now just to piss off the other one Um, (laughs) and it worked and then we got married and we're still together for 15 years so it was good. Wait, I'm confused. So you're going out with guy A... And then yes. he introduced you to Guy B. You got married yep. to Guy B. Yep. And then you dumped Guy B to get back to Guy to get back at Guy A. No, no, no. I'm still married to Guy B. Oh, so, so she right. got with, she got with Guy B just to piss off Guy A. And it worked. Yeah. And now you're happily married. So that's yeah. great news, Christina. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> good. <laughs> <laughs> in Vegas, $1,000 spending money, and Kylie Minogue live. Hi, this is Kylie Minogue. It's Chrissy's Kylie Cassettes. Kylie's new album, Tension, out now, featuring hits that um that um and Tension. I've only been on air for a few months on this show and I'm adoring it, but I really think that this competition is going to be so hard to beat. Listen to the catalogue of prizes that we are about to give away to a Chrissy Swan show listener. Tickets for two on a plane to Las Vegas. Accommodation for two. $1,000 spending money. I mean, put it all on black. Right. <laughs> and the Pierce de Resistance. Sold out tickets to see Kylie in her residency in Vegas. I mean, it's a money can't buy opportunity. Epic. And she's going to be so close to you that you could almost reach out and like touch her or like hear her, oh. feel her breath on your hands because it's so intimate. Last week, we sent Sarah from Ipswich to the airport and we have one more set of return tickets. In the draw is Ellie and Melissa and Katie who have all guessed a song during the week. But only one can go, and that person guessed the Kylie song in the shortest amount of time. Now, we're going to punch in a number. She doesn't know. I'm nervous. I know. I'm nervous too. Okay, I'm hitting dial. Okay, so far, so good. I mean, you'd have your phone on, wouldn't you? You'd answer it. Hello, Katie speaking. Oh, hi, Katie. It's Chrissy Swan from Nova. Oh, my God. Hello, Chrissy Swan from Nova. What do you think I'm about to tell you, Katie? If you're about to tell me what I think you're about to tell me, I need to go and get a lot more towels. <laughs> <laughs> you go straight to the linen cupboard, Katie, because you are going to see Kylie in Las Vegas! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Yes! Are you joking? No, Are you we, joking? we would never joke. It's you! It's you. Oh, my God. Is this a radio prank and Jack's going to come through my door and be like, oh, you're <laughs> punk? Uh-huh. I'm way too cool for that, Katie. <laughs> no, you guessed it in the shortest amount of time, eight seconds. You absolutely knocked it out of the park and you are oh going to see God. Kylie in Vegas. Oh, my God. I'm shaking. <laughs> Friday the 13th, not unlucky for me. No, no it is not. It absolutely oh. is not, Katie. Do you know who you're going to go with? 
Well, I did say on Wednesday if I won, I'd ask Jack to go with me. But mm. since then, my husband, my sister, and a few apparently <sighs> crazy Kylie fans have contacted me and said that I should take them. So I actually don't know. Oh, well, I think the easiest way to let everybody down is to say you're going to go with your original promise to Jack. <laughs> 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 take your friends, Katie. I'll allow it. Katie, it's oh happening. It's happening so soon as well. I mean, I would just. I, I'm a. I'm a chronic pre planner. I'd be putting out the suitcase now and just popping bits and pieces in, uh, getting ready for the big trip. Okay, I'm going to plan what? the outfit, the pre outfit. Yes. Everything. Yeah. What are yes. you going to wear to the actual show? Um, it's going to have to be glitter, sequins. Good. Um, yes. Yeah, big hair, big makeup. Katie, I don't know about the size of your bum, but may I humbly suggest a pair of short gold hot pants like in a <laughs> spinning around film clip? Yes, yes. All right, I'm on to it. I'm well, going to be iconic now to go and buy a pair. Katie, <laughs> you are a gorgeous winner. This has been such a privilege and a joy. Congratulations, Katie. And the good news, Swanee, is for Nova listeners, Ricky Lee, Tim and Joel will be giving away a trip next week too. Really? So make sure you tune in to them for another chance. Kylie's new album, Tension, is out now featuring Padum, Padum and Tension. That's us done for a week. I'll see you Monday, Swanee. See you, Jack. Now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.